Yeah, it's my great pleasure to be here sharing with you what I have been doing in the last uh, three years in an uh, advanced uh, physics lab and also a writing intensive course. And, and uh, so the outline of my talk, first I will give a brief introduction to this course and uh, with a focus on the writing assignments and also the evaluation method. And also, um, then I will spend the, uh, the bulk of time to discuss how I use Moodle and, and also uh, with other method do a blended learn, design this blended learning uh, pedagogy for the students to learn how to write the science scientific papers, not just the uh, journal papers. In this class, actually, there's uh, uh, many different types of scientific writing involved. And uh, uh, I will focus on to, I will have, you will see a lot of screenshots from Moodle. I will show you how uh, specifically we use the workshop um, function, as uh, Melanie just mentioned, to implement the peer review process. The goal of there, the goal there is I really wanted to resemble or, and mimic the real uh, journal paper review, submission and review process like uh, what all the physicists will deal with for our research. So, you know, so like uh, you will see how that's, that can be done in like a Moodle. And finally, I will summarize. And so um, the course I have been doing this experimenting is uh, Physics 331, which is called Advanced Experimental Physics. So, so this is a, uh, the 300, this is an upper level uh, physics lab course, and uh, which, uh, which provides uh, more than 10 experiments. And the students won't do all of them, but they will pick, maybe typically students will do five or, five or six of them. Uh, students meet in class uh, in the lab twice a week and uh, each time for four hours. So majority of this class time are actually uh, uh, spent in doing the experimental work. And uh, um, the, um, so the, uh, I listed the learning goals here. So I highlight using different colors for you that it's very like uh, so wordy. So basically through this course, students are expected to exercise curiosity, creativity, and develop uh, critical and quantitative thinking and deepen their understanding of physics concepts through conducting experiments. And uh, they are supposed to develop data analysis skills understand the scientific errors. Errors means uncertainty here. That's uh, some specific statistic uh, uh, data analysis we uh, meant in, uh, in physics. And so they are supposed to learn to report, um, report the experimental results and uh, with uh, like a correct, correct significant figures and uncertainty and also um, they we, they want we want them to be trained and uh, uh, and uh, become skilled in using all kind of standard software such as say um, uh, LaTeX, uh, Microsoft Word, and uh, Photoshop, and uh, also data analysis software software like um, Mathematica, Cladigraph, or Origin, and also uh, with all these tools they learned in this class, and they <coughs> they can. Um, write their journal paper type uh, of reports. So in the format, we actually even require a specific format, which is uh, mostly used in physics, which is the American Physical Society um, uh, a physical review letter format. That's what we use. Actually, we use exact the template. Every physicist, if they want to submit to that journal, they, the, we just use a template for students to use in this class. So their paper actually look, the like format wise, they look exactly like what you will see in the real journal. And uh, so they also are expected to communicate their results in oral, oral presentation. So for that to be done, and they will pre uh, exercise how to write, uh, say, conference abstract. They will submit the abstract, they will make PowerPoint, and they will do an oral presentation. and. Uh, so uh, similar to what David said, we, writing is not just an outcome of 
this cause, not just the outcome of doing experiment, it's really a way, it's a tool for them to practice inquiry and critical thinking. And also, um, they, they will learn how to integrate the feedback from their peers and then so uh, come up with a better revision. So uh, here I outline the different types of writing assignments in this co uh, class. So we have two cloakum sum uh, summaries, which counts 10% of the grades. And uh, so students are, are required to attend at least the two cloakum talks and then they are supposed to write a summary. So this is more like you write in layman language to describe what you learned. You are not supposed to, it's more like, a, so if you submitted like an NSF proposal before, that's a non-technical abstract type thing. And then, so then they, uh, they need to write a paper press for the journal club. So students are, are required to read uh, a journal, just like uh, they, they need to find the paper, journal paper they are interested in. They read it, they will share with the class, but before they share with the class, they need to write a paper press type. Again, this is more like a sign, it's a newspaper, like uh, for a big discovery type of uh, uh, news press. Uh, so then they need to write uh, one abstract for the mini conference, that's for the oral presentation, and then two research journal papers based on their, what they have done in their experimental work. They, they, they will typically do five or six experiments, right? They can pick two of them to write, uh, write papers on. So, we, so I specifically designed this a progressive sequence for writing assignments because you can see the scope of writing or the requirement of the writing are very varied in all these assignments. I intentionally picked that. So uh, for example, like, uh, so we started, so day one, they will have an assignment to learn how to use LaTeX. And LaTeX is a kind of markup language physicists love to use. Mm -hmm. And then so <laughs> some old fashioned physicists even think if you do not know how to use LaTeX, you, you are not a physicist. Uh, I'm not that kind of person, but I do see like, a, the, like a, the need from the community. They soon, it will be better for them to learn that. As, er, as early as possible. So day one, I gave uh, a, a tutorial and also gave all, all the handout to help them to get started learning that. Then like uh, the first or second week, they practice the LaTeX. Just use LaTeX to, do, to generate their first uh, cloakum summary. So, so the LaTeX is basically if you need to do the uh, equations or citations, those can be very complicated. But the Klokom summary is just a text, right? You need to worry about fonts and maybe one reference, right? So, so it, it's the easiest the LaTeX. Example is almost like a hollow word for any computer language. So they start from there, and then the second week or third week, they, at that time, they have already finished their first exper experiment. So they are required to pick whatever lab they wanted to, the, the experimental results, they wanted to write the first paper on, they need to generate the first figure they wanted to present in their paper. So that mean, needs, oh, I teach MATLAB in this course too. So I require them to use MATLAB to generate the first uh, figure, and the, including caption. So then, like, uh, so they will do the second program summary, and afterwards, and so, uh, so the first program summary, I do not require reference, and the second one, I require reference. So they have to work how to do the reference for the LaTeX, using the LaTeX. And then they do a newspaper press. So that exercise just push them to learn how to look for literature, and then how to cite, and how to understand that. So if they can write in name and summarize what they learned from those uh, journal papers uh, in name and language, so they will be more or less ready for writing the introduction part of their own paper because it's similar work, right? So it's a literature review and the overview of what has been done, what's the significance of the work. And then, so they, they will move to uh, the, the real big, big job, the paper one. 
the first paper, that's about the, in the middle of this class. It's like a week seven or eight. And then, so we go through three drafts. So similar to what David just introduced. So the first draft, uh, uh, they come up, I say, you come up with the best version you can on your own. Then they submit the first draft. We will do an in-class peer editing. So I give them a worksheet for the peer in class, in class peer editing, they are paired up, just two students paired up. And then, so they use about two hours sitting just next to, to each other and go over their own work. I told them this is more like the collaborative teamwork before you submit your paper to a real journal. We, as a experimentalist, we always go through this, right? Unless you, 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 you have a single author paper. Otherwise, we all go through this phase. So that's a peer editing, a uh, collaborative editing part. That's for after the first draft. And then they do a revision based on that. And they, they submit the second draft to Moodle. You will see how that's done technically. And then so, so the, the submission, um, after they do the submission uh, through Moodle, then they will do peer review. So the, the whole assignment is anonymous. So they are not going to know who reviewed them. So it's a, just, a, just a totally mimic what's happening for the real world for the journal paper review. And then, uh, so, uh, so after that peer review process, and the, the students will get the peer review comments through the Moodle system. And then I will set, sit with them for each student for one hour. Then we will have this one-on-one -on -one meeting. There are two purposes for those kind of one-on-one -on -one conference. Uh, first is go provide my feedback for the paper. And also to go over, just like uh, discuss the assessment the student got from their peers, whether they have some questions, and uh, just uh, overall is kind of uh, a discussion um, about uh, how we can make the paper better. And uh, um, so after that, the students submit the final draft. And then it went through another round of peer review. Uh, basically, it's a grading. That peer review is more grading for the students. I want the students grade not just be determined by me as the instructor. I want I, their grades for those uh, papers are actually the average of students and mine. And so I want the student to get involved. And also after that, so we have a, a conference abstract and another round of the second paper. Okay, so the so the uh, I already pretty much said. Uh, so through the process uh, said about uh, this uh, blended learning, where the blended learning comes in. So it's an integrated peer instruction and the instructor teaching. And also it combine, combine the in-class peer sharing and online peer review and one-on-one -on -one meeting with the instructor. So OK, yeah, basically I already said this previously. So basically the first draft, so editing worksheet, and uh, that's a guideline. And uh, the in-class editing, yeah, I'm not going to repeat this. Basically, that's the, the process. And also, the evaluation for writing. So one thing I think very important for any writing assignments is you, uh, so is I always try to provide explicit grading rubric, even for those, like I said, colloquium summaries. I always give students very explicit one sheet of expectations and how I'm going to grade your work so the student won't get confused. So you see, just like this is all the evaluation or grading rubrics I posted on Moodle. And also, I posted them as soon as possible, usually at the beginning of the semester, so they will know that way before the deadline. So then, so even when they are right, before they write, start writing, they know what they are supposed to do. So I think that's important. So here I will start, like I say, introducing how we do it in, in Moodle through workshop. So thanks to many like uh, <laughs> the great staff we have at Bryn Mawr. So I got this idea from a workshop and uh, organized the violets. And uh, that happened to be the summer or right before 
I, I taught this class for the first time. So it was just in time, and I had the time to implement this. And so uh, what I show here is the example back uh, from the, the spring 2015. In that class, I only have seven students. OK, so, so for this, what I show you here is, uh, is what you as an instructor is going to see after the, the entire paper process, review process is done, because it, it says closed here. Because I cannot, uh, I didn't do the screenshot while, while I was teaching. So basically, you have several. Um, so I, I give you a zoom in so you can see better the important part. So you have the setup phase. So that's what, what the instructor do before the student even see that. So you set up, say, for example, timelines and instruction for each steps. And uh, also you provide, uh, yeah, pro provide instruction for the submissions and, uh, and assessment. So that's what you do behind the scene before the students even see it. And then the students do their submission after the student submission done, and what the what the instructor can do is allocation. Allocation just means allocate the reviewers for each paper, right? So it can be done in two different methods. So it can be done. It can you can choose whether it's anonymous or like students can see their reviewers for different purposes. That can that can be all important, like a, a pro, like a. Um, options you could have. And allocation, you can also do manual allocation. I believe David did the manual one. I did, uh, I did automated one. Uh, the reason for that, for the first round, is I don't really know students' level that early on, right? So I would rather just anonymously, like I said, uh, just like uh, let the computer play the game and uh, pair up students. The advantage of the automated, so I was lucky for the first time there were only seven students, but the second round I got 17 students. So I assigned one paper to three students. You can see, if you do the math, how many possibilities that could have. It could be a mess. It could be several, like several days of your own brain work, right? <laughs> so, in, so in that case, I was lucky to set it up for fewer students to get experience, comfortable with the system. So I'm not going to screw up the next big group of students two years later. So then, so after you've done that, and also for each step, you can control exact time you want that thing to be done. And then, so after that, the students will just get this assignment. So they will start their review, peer review. After they submit peer review, Moodle can even grade the, the, the review, then can grade the student's review as, uh, as what you set. So what I said is just analyze the students uh, submit their review on time. They got full credit for that review part. So so that's why. Okay. So for the assessment, the way I set up is it has two parts. This is again resemble the real journal review. So you usually, as a reviewer, you will have some like a, a multiple choice like thing, right? Check, check, check. And then you have box to write your comments. That's the same. So there's a, like a numerical grading, like a, it's a grading rubric. And the, based on that, they check which, uh, which level. And then, so then they have the box to put their narrative uh, comments. So this is a criteria. That's a rubric I provide. So it's 10. I, at the beginning of this class, I gave a handout. Not, they, this is not the first time they see it. They, I gave a handout, which is two pages. So they knew that at the beginning of the class. So you see, like, for, so uh, the criteria are here. And these are the four different levels, depending on the reviewer's checking. And then the, the grades will be automatically calculated by Moodle. And then, so I provide an example from a real review comments I got for my own paper mm -hmm. to share with them. I, I, I share three such examples here. I just give you one example. And then, so the students will know how to, how, how are they expected to write a review? I said, you do not want to say this paper is horrible, right? You wanted to provide a constructive, meaningful, review comments to help your peers 
to 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 improve. Meanwhile, you want to be you provide accurate critique, right? So to to uh, ju to give the accurate comment on the level of the paper. So this is what the students, one, one example from the student, you see like how the, the, the even the format kind of mimic what I provided and they do the very detailed editing and provide as a minor comments. And another student, this is more, more like, a, it's similar to what, what uh, like the second example I, I provided. So the students, uh, didn't learn from like the real examples I provide. And here I show you the first class I taught. So there are seven students, and each paper got reviewed by two students. So what you see here, this is uh, the reviewer, just like uh, this student's work got reviewed by two of them, two of their peers. And here is this student, she reviewed two, review, uh, two papers. And then this is a grade for the assessment. Yeah, it could be confusing when you first look at it, but when you're used to it, and uh, you, you will know. So this is how Moodle report. And then, so this is the assessment results I grabbed uh, just from the, all those numerical grades. So, uh, I, so basically, so the, the blue ones are the student, average of the student's review. The yellow ones are my grade, <laughs> the grade I give. So you see, so actually, if, if people are interested, we can do some cross-correlation study and maybe get something out of that. One thing I did learn from this is whether students have enough time matters a lot. Because, I, like I say, just straightforward thinking is paper two should be better than paper one, but no. For the first round, when I taught in 2015, the paper two is comparable, performance of paper two is comparable <coughs> to paper one. After all these things we, we, we learned together, the reason is the paper two was due in the final week. I learned from that, and I moved the deadline earlier, two weeks earlier, you see, at least for the second round, is, is paper two does is better than that. So just from this, so so the advantage. So this is my summary. So so uh, I will just jump to the advantages I could I could could think of and I observed. So the anonymous peer review process and uh, uh, it works extremely well for this case for this particular setting. And uh, it, you have high efficiency for assigning the reviewing task. And also, you have automatic numerical grading. And also, it's, uh, you can, if you wanted to do statistics, you can easily do that, especially if you have a large class. And uh, if you wanted to do peer review for a writing, uh, the assessment is much easier when you use this kind of tool. Thank you for your time.